The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today and I stand in the well of the House as a proud American. I love my country, Mr. Speaker, and because I love my country, I try not to forget those who go to distant places, those who go into harm's way, and they do it because they love the country. Many of them do not come back the same way they left, Mr. Speaker. They are the men and women who serve in our military. And I never want to forget the sacrifices that they make. So today, I want to salute and honor them for the many causes that they have taken up and for the many times that they have lead, left their homes and their loved ones to stand up for liberty and justice for all, to make real the great and noble American ideals, to provide us the safety and security that we have today. But I also stand here today in the well of the House, Mr. Speaker, to announce my solidarity for justice, my solidarity with the Muslim community for justice, for justice, because I understand what it's like to be a part of a community that is treated unjustly. I lived through segregation in the United States of America. I know what it's like to go to the back door. I know what it's like to drink from filthy colored water fountains. I know what injustice looks like. I've seen its face. I know what it smells like. I've been in waiting rooms where only blacks could sit and they were for blacks only because there were other places for others. So I don't want to see anything like that, similar to that. Anything that's remotely similar occur to someone else. So I'm standing here today in solidarity with the Muslim community because of the injustice that's being perpetrated against Islam. I am a Christian. My grandfather was a Christian minister. But I stand here to support Islam today, one of the great religions of the world. And I do this, Mr. Speaker, because to demean Islam by adding the word terrorist with it is an injustice to the religion. Islam is a peaceful religion. No religion condones the taking of innocent lives intentionally. Let me repeat this. No religion condones taking the innocence of the lives of innocent persons intentionally. This is why I'm here, because I want to make it clear that Islam does not condone this. We should not be talking about Islamic terrorists. Why not call them what they are? People who commit dastardly deeds, and if you do it in the name of a religion, that doesn't make what you do a part of the religion. And people ought not be found guilty by their affiliation with a religion. What these people are doing, ISIL, Al-Qaeda, Daesh, ISIS, by any name, is evil. And we ought to call it such. It is not Islam. And we ought not as a result, decide that we are going to bar all members of the Islamic faith from this country. That would be wrong, Mr. Speaker. To even consider doing it is something that I find repugnant. Barring all people because of their faith, the Islamic faith is not, is not the motivating factor behind all of this injustice that we see being perpetrated by ISIL. They can claim what they want, but the members of the faith have spoken up. In Houston, Texas, we met just recently, and we discussed this at length. Every Muslim in that room denounced what was being perpetrated and perpetuated by ISIL, by, by ISIS, by any name, evil. And we ought not do this to a great religion. I stand for justice, and I stand for justice for the Islamic faith. I believe that persons who are in harm's way in Syria and in other countries ought to be given an opportunity to escape harm. I believe that the Good Samaritan was right. The Good Samaritan didn't ask, what will happen to me if I help this person who's in harm's way? The Good Samaritan posed the question, what will happen to him if I don't help him? 
This is the question we have to ask ourselves as it relates to our brothers and sisters. And they are our brothers and sisters because there's but one race and that's the human race. One God created all of humanity to live in harmony, to quote Dr. King. But the question we have to ask is what will happen to them if we don't extend the hand of friendship? The Good Samaritan went so far as to take the person to a place where there was shelter, where the person could receive some attention and say to the innkeeper, if you will, extend me a line of credit. If this person needs more than what I can give you today, I will come back and I will take care of my line of credit. We owe it to ourselves as a great leader of the world, the world leader, to make Spire. sure that we extend justice to Islam. And Mr. Speaker, I'd like to place in the record a list of the persons who were in attendance at the meeting. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.